Hi guys and welcome to this set of videos on expressions and formula revision. So here is a list of topics that you're going to need to revise for this unit. So we have expanded brackets and factorising, that's what we'll cover in this video. Then significant figures and scientific notation is in video 2. Volume and algebraic fractions in video 3. Arctic sectors, certain indices in video 4. And finally, creating and completing the square in video 5. So here we're just going to look at some basic skills that you need to be able to do to pass the unit assessments. When it comes to doing extension assessments and for prelims and for the exam, you need to enhance these skills by looking at past paper questions. So we'll start off with expanding brackets. So to expand out a single bracket, you need to remember to multiply the term outside by everything inside the bracket. So if we have 3 bracket 2x minus 4, the 3 has to multiply the 2x and the 3 has to multiply the negative 4. So the 3 times the 2x would give us a 6x, and the 3 times the negative 4 gives us a negative 12. Similarly, for the second example here, we've got 4 bracket 3 minus 5a plus 6. Just remember that this 4 outside the bracket has nothing to do with the 6 at the end, because that's not inside the bracket. So as before, the 4 multiplies every term inside. We get 4 times the 3 to get 12, but 4 times the negative 5a to get negative 20a, but then we've still got that plus 6 on the end. Now what we have to do is just tie the upper terms a wee bit. So we've got a 12 and a plus 6, they can go together to give us 18. And so in total we have 18 minus 28. And that would be your final answer. So if we now look at double brackets. So these are two examples that you might come across. So first of all we have x plus 4 multiplied by x minus 2. So this is where we use our um, process of FOIL. So multiplying the first, the outers, the inners and the last. So if we look at the x plus 4, x minus 2, we need to multiply the x's together, and then the x with the 2, and the 4 with the x, and the 4 with the negative 2. So the x times the x would give us x squared. The x and the negative 2 is a negative 2x. 4 and x would give us a positive 4x, and 4 and negative 2 gives us a negative 8. Again, we need to tidy this up, so the two x terms in the middle, we can collect together. So we get x squared plus 2x minus 8. For the second example, you'll see that there are now three terms inside that second bracket. So just remember that everything in the first bracket has to multiply everything in the second bracket. So the x has to multiply the x squared, x with the 4x, and x with the 3. We'll then have the negative 1 with the x squared, negative 1 with 4x, and negative 1 with 3. So when we multiply out by the x, we're going to get an x cubed first of all, then a plus 4x squared, then a plus 3x, then with the negative 1, so negative 1 times the negative x squared will give us a negative x squared, the negative 1 and the 4x will give us a negative 4x, and negative 1 and 3 gives us negative 3. Now here you'll see that there are similar terms again, there's two x squared terms, there's two x terms, we need to connect them up together. So we have x cubed to begin with, the plus 4x squared minus x squared gives us plus 3x squared in total, plus 3x minus 4x leaves with negative 1x, and minus 3 on the end. And there we have the final answer. Okay, now we're on to factorising. So remember there are three different methods of factorisation. We always start by first of all finding a common factor, then a difference of two squares, and then a trinomial. So the first expression we have here is 4y minus 12. So looking for a common factor, you can see that both 4y and 12 share that common factor of 4. So we can take that out to begin with. Then we need to think, what do we multiply 4 by to get back to what we started with? So to get back to 4y, we need a y inside the bracket. And to get back to 12, we need to have a negative 3. There's nothing else we can factorise here, so that's our final answer. For the second one, it's a wee bit trickier this time, because we've now got some letters and numbers. We've got two letters in there. So, first of all, identify a numerical common factor. So you've got 3 and 12, so we can take out 3. But then look at your variables. You've got a, b, and b squared. Well, you can obviously see that a b is common to both of those, so that can also come out. So to get from 3b to 3ab, we need to multiply that by a. And to get from 3b to 12b squared, 
Well, we first of all need to multiply by 4, but then we also need to multiply by another b. Again, you'll see there's nothing to be factorised inside the bracket, so that's your final answer. Okay, so now we're looking at the difference of two squares. So we have a squared minus 81 to begin with. So for the difference of two squares, we need to take the square root of both terms. You see that a squared is obviously a square term, and 81 is a square number. So if we square root both of these, we have a and 9. That goes into both brackets. Because we don't want an a term in the middle, and we want a negative 81, one of these needs to be positive and the other negative. And that leaves us with a fully factorised expression. Same goes for the second one, 4x squared minus 25y squared. Just because there's numbers in there, don't let that throw you off. What you should see is that both those numbers are actually square numbers. So the square root of 4x squared, well that would be a 2x. And the square root of 25y squared would be 5y. Again, we don't want an inner term with x's and y's. So we have one positive and one negative. Again, it's fully factorised. Okay, now we're on to the third method, which is the trinomial method. So we start off with x squared minus 2x minus 8. So we're looking for the factors of 8 here that would give us the negative 2 in the middle. So we can have 1 and 8, or 2 and 4. Now the only combination that would work here, looking at the two signs, is for us to have negative 4 plus 2. That would give us that negative 2. So into the brackets, double brackets, we need to have the x and the x to get the x squared with a negative 4 and a positive 2. The second one becomes a wee bit more complicated. We now have this d in front of the x squared. So it's probably easier for us to use a little table to help us. So we're first of all looking for the factors of the 3x squared, which would give us 3x and x. We're then looking for the factors of 2, which are just 1 and 2. But we don't know which order these need to go in, so let's put them in both orders. So to find out which one we're actually looking for, we need to cross multiply and see if we get this 7x in the middle. So if we do 3x times 2, that would give us a 6x, and x times 1 gives us x, which in total gives us 7x. So therefore that's the correct combination to put into your brackets. So now we read across the way, so we have 3x and a positive 1, and an x and a positive 2. That goes inside the brackets to fully factorise the expression. Okay, so on top of all the three methods of factorisation, sometimes you might get two of these put together, where you have to do a multiple factorisation. This can sometimes come in the form of a common factor, then a difference of two squares, or a common factor and then a trinomial. So go through your list of common factor, difference of two squares, and trinomial, following it in that order. So the first thing we should always look for is a common factor. So looking at this expression of 5y squared minus 20, you see that we've got a common factor of 5. So we can take that 5 out. To get back to the 5 by squared, we need to multiply it by y squared. And to get back to the negative 20, we need a negative 4. And what you should see is that inside the bracket now, y squared minus 4 is actually a difference of two squares. So we can factorise this again. So the 5 is going to stay where it is. For a difference of two squares, we need to have the square root of both terms. So the square root of y squared is y, and the square root of 4 is 2. Again, we don't want an inner term, so one's positive and one's negative. Now it's fully factorised. Same goes for the second example here. We've got 4x squared minus 14x minus 8. Now looking at the three coefficients, the three numbers here, we've got 4, 14 and 8. Each of those have a common factor of 2. So let's get that 2 out. To get back to the 4x squared, we need to multiply by 2x squared. To get back to the negative 14x, we need a minus 7x. And to get back to the negative 8, we need a minus 4. Now, inside, you'll see that you've now got a trinomial. So now we need to factorise that. So we're looking for the factors of 2x squared, so 2x and x, along with the factors of the negative 4. 
So we could have 1 and 4, 4 and 1, or 2 and 2. So think about the combination of signs here. We want 1 positive and 1 negative. If we made this a negative 8, a, sorry, a negative 4 and a positive 1, and then we did our cross multiplication, we'd get a negative 8x plus x, which does give us that negative 7x we want in the middle. So again, that's the correct combination. So looking horizontally across, 2x and positive 1 goes with x and negative 4. So your fully factorised expression, the 2 stays outside, we have our double brackets with 2x plus 1 in the first one and x minus 4 in the second one. Now it's fully factorised. Okay, so that's the end of this video on the basics of expanding brackets and factorising. You should now go away and try some questions on this and extend your knowledge by looking at past paper questions. This will help you for extended assessments and prelims. The next video we're going to look at will look at significant figures and scientific notation.